Hi, welcome to Couch on Colorworks. My name is Lori, otherwise known as My Cat Pearl on Instagram and Ravelry. It's today, it's episode 29. It's Saturday, August 13th. Welcome, 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 welcome past viewers, welcome new viewers. Thank you for checking me out again and spending another half hour, 40 minutes with me. Today we'll talk about life in Ohio. I don't have any finished objects. Uh, some works in progress. I did do some purchases, but it was sewing related for some project bags and some DPN holders. Um, and I don't have any updated stash dash totals because I didn't finish anything yet. I have some almost, you know, oh, something on my hand. Um, so what's going on in Ohio right now? Well, it's hot, but I think it's pretty much hot everywhere. Uh, last weekend was Pelotonia. This is my, um, I can't show you the, I guess I can show you the back. I'm not sure what you'll see, but it's our, oh, sorry. It's our green out, ooh, hitting the table. Our green out shirts, they're called. And what they are is t-shirts we buy and it goes to cancer research. We can wear them to work. It's about the only time we're allowed to wear t-shirts. Um, in my case, I decorated it with some family and friends or friends of family and friends who are either battling cancer now or who have lost their battle with cancer. Um, it was very important to me this year to bring these folks on my ride. You know, these are friends and family that have supported me for the past six years and I wanted to support you know, I'm not really support, but uplift, I'm sorry, those folks who, and recognize and remember and cheer on those folks who are dealing with cancer. It's just a terrible disease and it's terrible to watch somebody fighting, you know, that you can't do something to fix it. So that was last weekend, hence the no episode. Um, I, I put some block on, but it must have washed off or sweat out or whatever, but I um, I burnt my face right here so bad. I was like a leper at work. I was peeling. I still have some red and my lips are peeling. I was a hot mess. Nobody wanted to see that. Um, but that was last Saturday. It was a hard 50 miles. Um, I didn't get the training in that I needed to, and so it was, took a little longer, and God love my cousin for staying with me and helping me through. It was great. Um, I did pick up one thing. So it's 50 miles that I ride. It, the, the ride is 25 to 180, but I ride 50. Um, and about every 10, excuse me, Luna, what are you doing? I'm dog sitting today. About every 10 to 12 miles, there's a rest stop. And at the rest stop, there's first aid, there's bike support, there's porta potties. And there are snacks and drinks, so different companies, you know, staff these rest stops. Um, and then I think it's Abbott Foods donates most of the food, and AVI may be a company that we have a contract with at Huntington, where I work. But they, um, so they have food, like they have quarter cut up peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, they have bananas, they have fruit, they have nutrition bars, crackers, peanut butter, I mean, you name it, they have it. Fruit snacks. But they also have these. Tiny tot little gummy bears. I mean, if you want to, just as a comparison, this is my hand. Uh, this is the tiniest little bag. I think they're adorable. I pick one up every year. I don't end up, I'm sure, throwing them away. But I don't, first of all, I don't know how much energy I'm going to get out of, I don't even know how many ounces are in here half an ounce of gummy bears, but they're stinking adorable. So I wanted to show you. And these are, and they're, I think they're smaller too, like the actual gummy bears themselves. There you go. Uh, uh, tiniest little gummy bears like ever. I just think they're adorable. So I always throw one in my jersey and bring it home because I just think they're hysterical. Okay, so what's going off? Well, what else is going on in Ohio? Uh, today or this weekend downtown um, we have a a green space it used to be a mall I think Dillard's was like the big store in it maybe Lazarus I can't remember but there was it was a downtown mall like in most cities but it went under you know people pulled out Columbus is not like 
Boston or New York. I mean, some folks do live downtown. They're really trying to bring people back downtown. But for the most part, you work downtown, you live in the suburbs. And that's just kind of how it's been. You know, now I said they are making living spaces downtown. But right now, that's kind of how it works out. So they raised this mall, they tore down the building, and they turned it into a green space called the Columbus Commons. And I was listening to this on the news last night. They have 200 events a year down there, some free for family. They have, like, family game night where they have life-size games that you can play. Um, they have fitness classes down there on this big lawn. Uh, we went and saw the symphony plays there on Saturday nights and Friday nights, and they have different, you know, things that go on. Friday night, I think, is called Popcorn with the Pops, and that's for the kids, and it's earlier, and they play more upbeat music that children would like with the symphony. And then on Saturday nights, it's the symphony. Um, I went down a couple weeks back and saw Melissa Etheridge, and then the weekend later, I went for the 4th of July, um, and they had fireworks and all that. It's, I mean, it's a great space. They have a, an antique carousel there that's permanent and a couple permanent, like, little restaurant-y things, um, too, that are structure. And that's it. It's just green lawn. And so this weekend is the food truck festival. Oh, and I forgot. I printed off a, a list. I think there's going to be 60, maybe more, 75 food trucks. Different, all the different food trucks, you know, that are in the Columbus area, I think, converge this weekend and it's free during the day and in the evening I think it's five dollars and they have lot two stages with live music and you just go and you buy whatever food you want you take it back to the pavilion they call it um sorry I just got a haircut to the grassy area you bring a bag chair you can sit or sit on the ground and listen to music and visit and I think they had some crafters going on it's gonna be a fun time I may go um, my two best friends are headed this way as we speak to visit me for tonight and tomorrow. So we may do that. We may not. It depends. If it's like 99,000 degrees or they are calling for 50% chance of rain today. So we'll see. But that's going on. Um, yeah, yeah. Generally when I'm done with Pelotonia training, I'm all about fall ready. I want all the things pumpkin. And I just found out they're coming out with pumpkin spice Cheerios. Who does not want pumpkin spice Cheerios? Me, I do, I do. So that um, that we have to look forward to. I tease my coworker because she's all about summer. She loves summer, which I like summer too. But I am like, oh, only 18 more Fridays till Christmas. You know, whatever. She gets so like frustrated with me, but I, I love the holidays. And I've actually started holiday crafting. And so that makes me even more so want Christmas and fall and just want baked apples and oh I can't wait all right enough blathering on about life here there's not really that much else going on uh, some I think the Irish festival was also last weekend I didn't make it to that because that you know coincides with my bike ride excuse me but that's a lot of fun up in Dublin um, they have a huge festival up there I, ouch. I was unloading the dishwasher and must have hit one of the knives because I scaled some skin off. No, it's still tender. Okay, we'll talk about some works in progress. Why don't we? I think we should. Okay, first things first, I have on my oh, Felici, the Lost Lakes colorway. This is, if you don't know what Felici is, uh, Knit Picks puts this out. I wasn't a knitter when Knit Picks sold this on the regular, but now it comes out. It's a special reserve. And they, once a year, twice a year, I'm not sure. They come off with some colors. I think there was like 12 or 15 colors, and they sell them until they're gone, and that's it, until the next time around. Uh, this is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, five, 50 grams, 218 yards. Um, here's the colorway. Two going here. So it's uh, some yellowish greens going into blue. The only, ooh, okay, so this is going to be navy, and then there's more of a grayish blue to a teal, to a lighter blue, to a lime green, and then it goes up here to a light green, which I'm getting ready to do now. Um, this is going to be for a set of mittens. So this is the cuff. 
Oh my gosh, this yarn is super soft and squishy, by the way. It's very round. Nice stitch definition as well. Um, it's the first time I've knit with it, and I definitely will get some more. Um, now I can show you this one. Same, same place, although I started with a little more blue, and because I'm a little loony, I will most likely shorten the cuff so that the hands, which you will see, will match up. So it'll be a little shorter, you know, maybe a half an inch. I'm not really that pressed for it. Um, I have my little stitch markers here. This is where I would do the increase. This will be the right to mitten. And in the pattern that I'm using, you do your two by two rib. It was out of a magazine, so I won't give you too much. I'm not, I always question if that's considered a paid for. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it's just a basic mitten formula. Yeah, but we're going to be ripping back. Somehow I got, I got knitting the wrong direction, and now I am, oh, eBay. Somehow, I wonder if I can just do that? I don't think so. Oh, good gravy. I'm curling on, I'm knitting backwards. Oh Lord. Well, anyway, I'm gonna have to rip this back, which I can do, not a big deal, but this is where I would do the increase. So right increase for the right, left increase for the left. This will be ripped out and we will start anew. Because somehow I got going in the wrong direction and I'm purling and knitting at the same time. I'm not really sure exactly what I did, but I'm, I mean, I guess I could have the purling on the outside. I'll figure it out. But anyway, these are my mittens. I'm gonna have to do a little look-see at, yeah, somehow I got going backwards. I picked it up and went the wrong direction. Because if you see my active yarn, The active yarn should be on this needle and it's on this needle so I'm just gonna tink tink back or I doubt I'm gonna tink back three rows these are mittens they will be mittens one day apparently I'm gonna set myself back on those I'm knitting those on my US size 2 knit picks uh, needles that I got double points from knit picks I like them enough and I, I will use them. I, I'm preferring the child blue reds. I'm trying to get one out. Um, they're a little more slick than the knit picks that I have in my US size ones, which I need to locate those. Um, yeah, they're a little, they're a little more slick. So the, I'm fighting with the yarn a little bit to keep it on. Now, this project is a Christmas present, and I am, I can't show you too much. This is the Amulet Shawl by Curious Handmaid, Helen Stewart, part of the Shawl Society that she released. This one was the second one in the pattern. The third one just got released. I knew I would not be able to get this one done. The first one was a lot more stockinette. This one has some more to it, a little more meat to the pattern. But if you can see the picture... You know, there's some stuck in, or there's some garter stitch, and then there's some eyelet, and then there's some ribbing, and then lace. I'm at the point where I'm going to start the lace here next. Um, super pretty, super. That's coming up more blue than it is. It's actually, yeah, too much light. I'm blowing it out. It's actually greenish. It's called Pacific Tonals. It's knit pick stroll fingering. Uh, 75 superwash 25 nylon 100 grams 462 yards so it is a little thinner of fingering than the Felici which would have for 100 gram would be 420 so there it's a little thinner so you're getting a little more and it's a little less tight but it's super squishy um, this one has you know the center spine down the middle and then my eyelets and my ribbing which is all complete yeah, definitely it's showing up more blue. This is actually a greeny blue. Hey, Luna. This is actually a greeny blue. I don't know how to 
get it to show up more green. It's just not going to. Um, and this is going to be a gift. And my friend who is the recipient of it for Christmas is on her way. So she, I won't be um, working on this while she's here. But I'll get it done probably next week, I would say. I have about 20 rows left. But it's, it's 20 pay attention rows, if that makes sense. Like, I need to pay attention. There's... It's not anything that I would, I, I won't tell you what the actual rows are, but, and I'm making the large size, but it's, yeah, it's not, it's, it's not a lot of little sections do this over and over again. It's, it's. It's a lot. There's going to be a pearl rose every other, and then there's something going on in every row, which is exciting, because I've been doing, you know, the garter section lies. I've been doing the knit uh, ribbing section, so it would be nice to get into something different. Um, the other, or the last project that I would be hoping to finish soon is the hat for my small cousin, Addison. I need to start getting some double point minders and go in here. I found a pattern for them, one that I'd like to try to make. Um, now, this is just a pattern I made up. I didn't make it up, but I mean, it's called the Helix. Technique, I would say that's more of. It's a three color striping hat. It's on to double points now. Um... So you take three colors. I'm using, again, Nitpick Swish in the Worsted. 100% Superwash Merino. I am using Rainforest Heather, which is green with some purple in it. Eggplant, which is just purple. And this is called Marine Heather, which is like a tealy blue. And this is her first year where she's doesn't want pink and sparkly. So I'm so excited to do this for her. And this is how it's knitting up. Yeah, that's a pretty accurate representation of the colors. It is one row. I did some eggplant. I just cast on 96 stitches. I did some one by one ribbing, um, you know, for about an inch. Now here's where you can see I'm a little tight on my color changing. So, and there's my, I'm starting the decreases up here. What you do, and I think you can get a better look at it now that I'm on double points. I've got three yarns going. So you separate it by 33, 33, 33 stitches. And I placed markers. So when I got to the purple where I began, I picked up the second color and I knit 33 stitches. And then I placed a marker and I picked up the next color and I knit 33 stitches. Picked up the third color. First color, second color. Picked up the third color <laughs> and knit 66 stitches. So every time around, one of the colors will be knit 66 stitches. And what you're doing is you're spiraling the color up the hat. So there's not that jog that you would get. Let me show you. Because I, this one, I, I moved, you know, I switched yarns every row. And you see this jog that you're getting right here? I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it's a jog with the color changes. So you're kind of seeing, it's pretty pronounced on this side where you've changed the colors. You know, where I've changed, oops, where I've changed the colors. Um, I need to stop fiddling and show you. There we go. I'm just trying to figure out a way to... Get it up there. There we go. So when I do it like this, obviously the stripes are thinner, but there's no noticeable where the colors change because it doesn't really, you're not changing a row. You're doing a little bit on every row. And then when I bind off, you'll be able to see on the crown of the hat, it comes to a point. Um, and I'm almost there. I'm to the point where I'm doing some double decreasing. I'm ready to be done with this hat and this will be not necessarily a Christmas gift I do need to block this one but it will be more of a like just be a fall back to school winter here and put this on your head 
and I can maybe, I'm debating a pom-pom or maybe three small pom-poms right here or like a button, like a large, cute button of some sort. I'm not sure. I'll embellish it somehow for the little girl in my life. I'm sure she'll love it and it'll keep her head warm while she's taking the bus to school. Um, I have her brother's hat completed. His is the one that's orange and brown that I finished on the last episode that I did. And this is lunch knitting, although I probably will finish it here in a minute. It's that literally that close to being finished. And this is the other hat, and he got a larger pom-pom. And then it's, this is also made out of nitpick swish, and his is the orange and brown. It could be a Cleveland Browns, or for him, it's Heath. Heath Middle School, I think he goes to, eighth grade. And a nice big plush pom-pom on his. So those are my three hats that I've made as gifts for this year so far. And then if you can hear, the dog is literally digging for China in the couch. I'm not sure what she's looking for. I'll call her over here in a minute. Um, oops. And this is my scrappy blanket that I think I put some work on since the last time I've seen you. I do need to clean out this bag. I've got too much string or yarn in here. But I added this teal, this salmon, or this, I don't know what color this is, but I really like it. It's like a muted bluish gray. And this salmon color, and now I'm working on, this is the right direction. I'm working on this, um, some alpaca that I dyed up. So not really that far. Um, you know, it's warm. I've got some Christmas knitting I'm wanting to do, so this will get some love eventually. I'm in no rush to finish this. It's just something to, to use up the scrap yarn that I think one day will look super pretty on a bed, you know, make my bed or something. And I am using for sock and fingering weight. Those are the two weights of yarn I'm going to use in this blanket. I'm using a E crochet hook or 3.5 millimeter. And I did go get one with a rubber grip, um, just because this is something that I'll be using a lot, and sometimes the the metal ones get slippery in my hands, so I want something a little larger. So I went and bought that. And that's it right now for works in progress. Um, for future works, I'm going to make another Pure Joy for my friend Jen, who's coming. Um, Terry loves the blues, Jen loves earth tones. So I'm going to do a brown that I ordered, and then I got some undyed yarn, and I'm going to dye up a skein. It's going to look like fall. It's going to have a little brown. I'm doing this because I'm going to put a little, I'm going to sprinkle a little brown, a little, oh, I have some burnt orange. I have some uh, red and some emerald green. And I think I'm just going to blend them up and speckle the yarn. So it'll be a mostly cream background with some speckles of earth tones for her and do the two color contrasts. I think she'd really like that. And then the contrast color will be the brown and it's very tonal. So I think I'll enjoy that. Um, another future project I bought this episode for the love of knitting. And this is I think this is fall. Yeah, fall 2016. And what I really like is this jacket. Um, I like the detail on the front. It is called the Quick Finish Jacket by Alex. Oh, I'm sorry, Alexis Di Gregorio. And it's made, it looks like, with a worsted weight yarn. I'll probably buy some Quince & Co. worsted. I like the brown. Maybe I'll go with like a rusty red or an orange or something for fall. I really enjoy the shaping of this. I would make mine a little longer. Um, I am long in the waist. So I would definitely make it longer. Now, it's a kind of a toss-up right between this and the Better Made Cardigan by Hohe Locatelli. Kind of toss up. We'll see. But that's where I'm kind of thinking. Um, future. First, I'm going to, with some yarn that I bought, I got some Barocco Vintage. And I'm going to knit, by Tin Can Knits, a flax. 
baby pullover. Um, no, I don't have any children, but and babies to knit for, but I want to practice the piecing of it because I would like to make a flax for myself. And I think it's a free pattern and I can make a child size. I know enough people with children. That's not, I'm not worried about that. Um, but the piecing together will be kind of nice to just do it with an inexpensive yarn because that's part of my fear of doing a garment like that, which is why I haven't done one yet. I'm worried about, I'm not a small girl, so the amount of yarn that I would need could get pricey. And I don't want to buy a ton of yarn, you know, and mess it up, <laughs> basically, is kind of where I'm at. Hence the I'm ripping out socks because... I mean, not socks, mittens. I got knitting in the wrong direction. I mean, that was just laziness on my part, and I will, I will tink back. That's not a problem. But I don't want to invest the money into the amount of yarn that I would need in order to make a sweater or a cardigan. And I wear a lot of cardigans, so I'm kind of leaning towards a cardigan. Um, and then mess it up. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Um, my office at work is so cold. It's so cold. In the summertime, I it's a twofold reason. It's cold. And a lot of my shirts this year that I purchased were sleeveless. So I wear a cardigan every single day. Some type, maybe a shrug, maybe a cardigan. I'm not, you know, it depends. It doesn't matter to me which length it is. And I get cold while I'm sitting at work. Come here, Luna. Maybe she'll come and visit us. And I don't know what she's getting into. Uh-uh. Luna, come here. I don't, I do not know what she has. Sweetie. Hey, Luna. I'll find her in a minute. She's getting into something. I can hear her. Okay, so I wasn't planning on going to Joanne. But, Luna. I got some coupons. Sorry. What she got, honey? Oh, she had her bone. That's what she's chewing with. Come here. Come on. I'll bring her up. Y'all can see her. Oh, this is Luna, girl. Hi, sweetie. I know. You say hi to our friends? This is my niece's dog I'm babysitting. Hi, say hi to the friends. Oh, you're so cute. Okay, you can go back to your bone. She was just chewing on her bone. Um, so a coworker of mine brought me over her coupons because she's like, I'm not going to use them if you can go ahead. And then I looked on my phone app and I'm like, oh my goodness, there's some crazy sales this weekend. One was all a 70% off phone app coupon for ribbon. And I've been practicing around with my drawstring bags. So this is a drawstring. And this is one and a half inch wide Grogain ribbon. And then I melt the end, stitch it down. It's kind of twofold. One, I think it's super pretty. The ribbons don't seem to get twisted as much. I can leave a little bit of color up top if I want to. Um, Although this one I left a little too much, but I can. And I don't have to sew the, the pockets because I was kind of getting them off kilter sometimes. So this was something I was playing around with. And I really enjoyed the look, the finish. The one problem I, I have is this ribbon is $8 a spool. Now, this one that comes, this is red and white striped obviously and they had some polka dots is only nine feet so nine feet of this for eight dollars is not effective cost effective so I bought a bunch these are also $7.99 these are 21 feet so if you get just the solid color you're getting three times the yarn ish almost but you know you're getting a lot more yarn yarn ribbon and going with a, the plain color which is fine with me and I think I might I already have this color. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I already have it, but that's okay. Um, it's a pretty color, and I'll use it. So I got the teal, red and green, not necessarily for Christmas, but could be for Christmas. 
I have a lot of fabrics too that will match either one of oops, either one of these. And then orange, because I thought that too could be fall, you know, or. So I got five spools of nine, 21 feet each of solids. So this is perfect. And they were, instead of $8 a piece, they were like $3.41 a piece. So that definitely makes it much more cost effective. So I bought that, those ribbons, to work on some drawstring bags, because I like both. Um, all the yarn, or thread, I'm sorry, was, I had a coupon on my phone as well, 50% off all regular priced threads. So I bought, it's just heavy duty, all purpose, 250 yards of, I don't know what color this is. I don't know, but it's like a hot pink, if you can maybe see it. It's hot pink. To go with, I don't normally buy colored thread. Most of my bags I can use white or black. I try to economize there as well because I don't like my bags to be expensive. So if I can, you know, just use one or two different colors, it's less time consuming as well. And most of the bags, it's fine. If I need to change the color, obviously I will. But, but I bought this thread specifically to match this. I think this would look super pretty and I can also hand sew with this I'm going to make this is it's flannel or felt they had two different kinds of felt one which was really rough and then this was more expensive but it's a nicer there was a name for it but it just means fancy felt but this is the more upgraded version of felt and I think it's softer and it's much more pliable because I think what I'm going to do, and I haven't decided, I'm going to kind of contemplate. I'm either going to cut out individual bags for my double points and sew them up and then flop the top over and cut a little hole for a button. Or I'm going to make a long container or long, take the fabric, let me see if I can show you, like this, fold it up here, sew it depending on the size needle, and then the top can fold down and roll up, you know, small buttons, and then it rolls up and ties it, and holds a lot of double points. And I think I'm leaning towards that because it just will be much easier for storage, transportation, I don't know where all my double points are, what, you know, different sizes, and then I can hand him, I get some embroidery floss, I may have some, or use this, and put the number for the size. And I'm, I don't know if I have any half sizes. If I don't, then I might just do a bead, like stitch a bead on there for a one, for a nothing for the zeros, if I have zeros, which I don't think I do. A one for the one, a two for the twos, a three, a four, a six, however many. But I've got half a yard of this, so I've got plenty to mess with. Um, and I also wanted to make those little, a little book to hold needles, to hold my um, sewing needles. So I just thought I love this gray color. It's very neutral, and then I can accent it with some pink or teal. Uh, I got plenty of teal ribbon. I can top stitch some teal ribbon. So I did that. I got that yesterday. This was 40% off, maybe. And I just got a half a yard. And then I bought some fabric because I do not need more fabric, but. Originally, I was looking for Christmas fabric. It's time, it's coming out, and last year I missed out on a couple really pretty patterns that I wanted, and the color I wanted because I waited too long. So this year I was like, oh, I'll just see if they have any Christmas fabric. They didn't really have anything that I wanted yet, but I found this, the birds. Isn't that so pretty? It's a navy blue background. Clearly you can see the teals and the pinks and the white. Hence the teal ribbon. I think I will accent this one with the teal ribbon. It's so pretty. And I'm like, there's some flowers and the little birds and there's some gray and oh, so pretty. So that will be paired with this, which is white on white polka dots. Um, this is really busy and I just thought a basic white interior with the teal for the um, sleeve, and then I'll probably get a pink 
smaller and do the drawstrings. I just think that's so pretty. And I have some burn stitch markers to attach to it. Oh my gosh, I love this fabric. So pretty. And then I was thinking, it's, ooh, it's wet. My cup dripped. Fall, and I was wanting some fall fabric, and I don't, I don't want typical fall fabric. Mm, tell me this is not adorable. There's some foxes and a squirrel butt and some birds and some pine cones, acorns, another squirrel butt. I'm assuming there's a real squirrel here somewhere. There is. Uh, and a squirrel. And some leaves. I just thought this was beautiful. <coughs> It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. Come here. It's okay. Oh, come on. Somebody's here. It's okay. We're going to be done here in a minute. You sit right here with me. And then this fabric, I got to line it. Do you see those birds? And they're gold. I don't know if you can see it. They're metallic gold. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so fun to line. And then I'm going to either use the green, but I'm kind of going leaning towards this orange for the ribbon and then maybe the um if i can find like an olive green <laughs> sweetie an olive green um it's okay it's okay an olive green uh ribbon for the drawstrings i think we've been taken over by the dog today so that's what i'm going to work on when time allows um for some project bags i need to get an update i've got a whole bunch of bags sewn up Honestly, life has just gotten away from me and I haven't had time, so I was kind of doing a little summer reprieve and then I'm gonna get my Etsy store restocked and think, you know, maybe a different direction also. I'd like to add some, um, some stitch markers and some things like that. It's okay. And depending how the double point thing turns out, I may add some of those. Okay, well, the dog is going crazy. I, I'm going to say goodbye. Happy knitting.